Welcome! And on today's show, I get to talk about the best Casio watches, all, all under £100. Under £100. Pounds. But first... Today's shot comes from 2.v.hour. Dot dot a lot of pine in the air, isn't there? Well, this is a superb picture between Japanese digital loveliness and a bit of woody nature. I love it. It looks like he's just plonked his Casio Royale in the decorative bowl that sits on the dining room table. Who knows if it's got a lovely whiff of potpourri, but I hope he managed to retrieve it safely afterwards. If you'd like to be on next week's Casio Corner, all you got to do, find me on Instagram here and tag me in on one of your Casio posts. Who knows? Next time, the star of the show could, could be, be you. Yes, I get to talk about all things Casio. Let's get stuck in, shall we? And I you watch out. Well, today I've gone all Christopher Ward. The C65 Trident Manual Wine Beauty. It's been paired with an amazing NDC original NATO strap and it looks the business. What a vintage inspired stunner. Right, so what does this logo represent to me? Well, I'm a kid of the 80s and you couldn't walk down a street, let alone look at a magazine without Casio being advertised somewhere. Anything fun and electrical in the 80s, Casio were usually the ones giving it to you. From digital watches, calculators, musical keyboards. In fact, I had this tone bank for Christmas. Oh, it was awesome. You push the demo button and wake me up before you go-go by Wham came on. Probably what inspired me to write music. Maybe not, but I was an impressionable lad. And digital watches was the height of geeky cool back in those days. Yes, if you had a calculator watch or some sort of sports water resistant digital watch, you were definitely looked at at one of the cool kids. For those of you that know me and the channel, the first watch I remember buying with my mum was the Casio CA53W calculator watch. Amazing looking. Now I've said this before, but I never did any calculations on that watch. One being I wasn't really interested in maths, but two, it was quite awkward to use anyway. For us Brits, it really was a highlight to get the Argos catalogue, wasn't it? When that magazine came in, I flicked straight through to the pages with the watches on and to see what crazy thing Casio had come up with next. To me, Casio is a link to the past and the company knows that and that's why they keep producing their old digital watches. Yes, there are watches that were in production in the late 80s and 90s that Casio still make today and are still very popular. This is because A, they're really affordable and B, well, they're just still cool. <laughs> Now the Casio collection I have is built around my love of the old days. You know, they're watches that remind me of the 80s or the 90s. Every Casio of mine you can buy for under £100. And most of them under about £40. I'm going to run through the list of the watches that I have, starting from the lowest priced watch first and moving all the way up to our £100 threshold. I'll tell you why I bought them. And at the end, we've got the MWC's Casio, Casio Awards. Awards. It'll be fun. I won't talk too much about all the specs, but this is my journey, my reasons for owning these watches. You'll see them on the wrist as well at the end. The prices I give you are what are currently on Amazon UK. I'll also leave links to all of these watches in the description below. They are my affiliate links. I get a little cut every time you use one of those links, but you don't pay any extra. Nifty. Are you Casio ready? Let's go. Number one on the list is the Casio F91W and arguably the only watch you'll ever need. This watch screams the late 80s to me. I love the use of colour with the blues, the golds and the reds. It's a watch everybody should have in their collection. This is probably the first watch Casio ever mass produced. They still mass produce them today, selling about 2 million worldwide on a yearly basis. It has all the functions you need. Apart from a decent backlight, let's be fair. But that 
that's the beauty of this watch. Casio haven't changed it at all. And for just under £10, where can you buy a cheaper icon? Super! Now the second watch on the list is not digital. And it's a watch I discovered not too long ago. The MRW-200H. Look at its tactical beautiness. Yes, this is a three-hand quartz watch with a date and date complication. It has a rotating bezel, but just friction-based. <laughs> No screw down crown, but the watch has a water resistance for up to 100 meters. All that for £14.99. I think that's a cracking deal. You can get so many different colors. And for £14.99, you can't go wrong. Next up, the A168. So this is our first look at a stainless steel bracelet. And I really do love a Casio bracelet. Very easy to adjust and it's very comfortable on the wrist. For those of you that like the F91, but laugh at its light, the A168 is proud of its luminescence. I mean, it tells you about 14 times on the front of the face. More of a modern luminescence to it. The case is definitely a little bit beefier in thickness and in diameter. I don't tend to get a lot of 80s, vibes or design with this watch. More early 90s to mid 90s, but it wears amazing on wrists. And for £22.50, it's a bargain. Next up, for £25.68, you can get an absolute icon in the CA53W. Yes, the Casio calculator watch that Marty McFly in Back to the Future 2 wore. This absolutely oozes the 80s for me and makes me think of my childhood. Casio haven't changed this at all. Its downfall has always been his lack of backlight. <laughs> And it's slightly more awkward to operate than a lot of the Casios. A lot of the operation is done with the little keypad on the front of the face. But the colours and the design, the watch isn't too small. Obviously what this can do that others can't is it has a calculator function. I just think it's a no-brainer. Yes, a very popular watch in the community. The Casio Royale. We named it because it sort of looks like a Seiko that was in a James Bond with Roger Moore in it. Whatever the reference, you can't deny you're getting a stunning watch for £27.73. pence. This watch has your world time, your countdown timer as well as your stopwatch, a great superior backlight, 100 metres of water resistance, plus it's just cool, isn't it? It's cool. Get your watch, get your watch out. out. For £27.90, you can get one of Casio's new vintage-inspired digital watches. Yet the a700 range came out around last year, I think. Definitely has the inspiration of the F91, the A158. But this has to be the slimmest Casio I have ever seen in my life. Look at it. It makes the F91 look like a chunky monkey. I do love the choice of colours on the face. The playful blue, gold, green and pink. It also has a far superior backlight than the F91. And for anyone looking to see an upgrade from those older watches, this is your puppy. Next up is a watch with a face that only your mother and Auntie Betty would love. Yes, the DW290. This watch was going for crazy money six months ago, but I found it on Amazon for £29.47 and I think it's a friggin' steal. <laughs> Isn't it beautiful? Yes, you don't see that design every day. It's big, it's bold, it's downright ugly, but I love it. The red frame around the screen reminds me of the first G-Shock back in 1983. I love the green printing on the case. This thing isn't a G-Shock, but it's sure built like one. It also has the G-Shock 200 meters water resistance, and it's just so unusual. Kudos to you crazy Casio cats. <laughs> Next up is the bling blinger of the fleet, the A159. Yes, this is like the blingy auntie of the F91W. If you were to look at them pretty quickly, you'd think they were the same watch, but the face is definitely different design. It's that resin case, painted gold, and a really comfortable goldy stainless steel bracelet. What I also love about this watch is the actual LCD screen is a little bit green to match the overall look of the watch, which I think is a nice touch. This one's Kurt's favorite. <laughs> And it's just class. Hello. From the glamorous auntie comes the suave uncle of the F91W. Yes, the silver case and stainless steel bracelet version of the iconic £10 beauty. Although it does use the same colours as the 59 and F91, there are still minute changes to the design, but there's no stopping it from looking like it's resin papa. All the same functions and it's extremely comfortable to wear. <laughs> Okay, so you like the idea of the Casio Royale, but it's a 
little bit too big for the wrist. Plus, it's just not retro enough. Well, sirs, madams, say hello to the A5D0WE, the precursor to the Casio Royale. This is a cool watch, isn't it? Big screen on it, nice compact case, very clear dial, not a brilliant backlight, but what do you want for £33.12? Next up is a watch I bought purely for the look, the DB-380. It's a retro data bank, which means you could add addresses and phone numbers into this watch. But that satinized silver finish to that plastic case and the amazing 80s looking uh, bracelet just made me want to get it. It's a great size for my wrist. Backlight comes out of the same workshop as the F91W, which is disappointing, but I love it. That color blue and the gold reminds me of Commander Worf playing around on his computer panel on the Starship Enterprise. Now, for some reason, this watch has ridiculously gone up in price. I paid around £30 for this. On Amazon, it's £64.99. It is quite a unique looking watch, I must say. You don't see many people review these, or wear them for that matter, but it looks great in the collection. The next Casio is a G-Shock with fashion on the brain. Yes, the GA2100 range, known as the Cassie Oaks, have a great mix between toughness and rather snazzy looks. Yes, I don't have many Annie Digi watches, so I was quite chuffed to pick one of these up. When they came out a couple of years ago, they were very hard to get. It's pretty big on wrist, but let's face it, most G-Shocks are. I like my camo version. I must say the loom on it's pretty poor. You only have loom on the handset and the backlight only lights up the small screen that you can't really read. Having said that, it's a great durable watch. 200 meters of water resistance, all that G-Shock toughness. You can buy the black version with the white indices for 74 pounds. This camo version is around 80 pounds. I do think they're worth it. Go check out my review for a more in-depth review. Yeah. So you know my fondness for calculator watches. The next watch is a watch I didn't own as a kid, but I do remember seeing in the early 90s, the DBC 600. Now this definitely looks like a console on the Starship Enterprise. It also reminds me of the metal of the DeLorean in Back to the Future. For some reason films like Total Recall, Demolition Man. It has the same finishing and bracelet as the DB380. And instead of those little rubber buttons on the CA53, this uses a membrane keypad. And I have to say it's much more user friendly. Unlike the CA53W, this is a data bank. So you can store names and numbers in it. It has dual time and there's a function where you can work out exchange rates from foreign currencies. I don't actually know how to do it yet on here. I still need to do a review of this bad boy, but I love its unique case, really emphasizing that membrane keypad. And I just think it's a cool watch. This one has rocketed up in price as well. It's around 89 pounds on Amazon. However, you can get the Gordy Gold one for 47 pounds. Is it worth 89 pounds? I think I'd go up to 50, but I'm so glad I've bought one. <laughs> The final entry on the best watches under £100 is the most expensive, but I also think it's the best bang for buck you could get. And that is the G-Shock 5610. Yep, wasn't into G-Shocks as a kid. I just thought they were too clunky, too bulky, too big. This one changed my mind on them. You've got the original case from 1983. It's got that same red frame around as the original, which I love. You've got your 200 meters water resistance. This watch is also solar powered. So you don't need to worry about changing a battery every two, three years. This watch has multi-band six, which means it takes a reading up into the sky from a pylon somewhere broadcasting accurate time and sending it straight to the watch. Now you can buy the base model of the 5600. So this looking watch without the solar powered and without the multi-band six for just under 50 pounds. But for 40 pounds more, you get what I think is probably the best watch Casio do under 100 pounds. Take two. Let's see a little more originality, shall we? <laughs> Lovely. Okay, one more watch to show you in my Casio collection. It doesn't make the list today because it's a vintage Casio. Yeah, a watch I used to own when I was a kid. Bought one on eBay and I'm loving it. It's the TS100 World Time and Thermometer. Yes, got a very good deal on this. I'm really surprised they don't make this anymore because it's not a small watch and the blues and the reds still work so well together. I paid £46 on eBay for this watch, but if Casio started remaking these ones, I'd snap one up in a heartbeat. 
So there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. There's something for everyone in that list, isn't there? You got your resin bands, you got your bracelets, you got your big watches, your small watches, your good backlights, your uh. shit backlights. The thing is with Casio, they're a little bit like Pringles. Once you pop, you can't stop. Yes, there's nothing better than receiving a brand new Casio box in the post. Just makes you turn into a little kid again. <laughs> Right, I think it's time for the MWC Casio Awards. I think I need to dress up for this. Ah, we are, lovely stuff. So not only was I going to show you my collection, I thought it'd be quite fun to give you a few categories of which watch does what the best. Okay, so the first category is most legible. Which watch can I read the time at the easiest? Well, obviously, it's probably with the watch that has the biggest face, and that would be the Casio Royale or the Referee Timer. The screen on those babies are very clear, and the numerals are really bold. Now, the least legible has to be the Bling Bling. Yet you really do have to look straight flat on at this to get a good view. But tilt it up and down, it's not so good. But what you lose in your legibility, you gain in your sophistication. Next category, best bang for buck. So top spec for the money you pay. Well, the first award has to go to the MRW 200H. I mean, for $14.99, three-hander, day and date complication, and 100 meters water resistance, plus a cool looking design, that's got to be bang for your buck. The other one has to be for me the 5610. All the amazing specs of a digital watch, including your multi-band 6 and your solar poweredness. This G-Shock has to be the best value for money. Next category is best backlight. Well the A700 is strong and it should be shouldn't it? It's a newer watch and I do like that orange glow but I think my favourite has to be the DW290. That coupled with the ease it is to push down those big buttons, the light illuminates the whole screen and also I can keep that backlight on for as long as I want. Next up, best bracelet. Well, for me, it goes to the A158. It's the first time I encountered this H-Link bracelet from Casio, and it is tremendously comfortable. The best strap. This may surprise you, but it goes to the F91 and the CA53W. The resin used on these straps are just really soft and are far better than a G-Shocks. Which is stiff as old boots. Now the cool award. Which watch would get the biggest kudos from the hip kids on the street? Well, I reckon if I walk down wearing the camo Casio, they know what time it is. So would I twice on this thing. Also, especially with the kids that I teach, I get a lot of compliments off of this bad boy. Who would have thought it? After 35 to 40 years of being made, this thing still turns heads. Okay, the looks more than I paid for it award. Well, it has to go to the MRW, doesn't it? It does have that Luminox vibe to it. And if you were to buy a Luminox, you'd be paying a good 200 pounds at least. This currently is 14.99. You do the math. And now it's the best to operate award. Has to go to the DW290. Look at the size of these pushers. Look at that. And the worst has to be the 5610. Yes, I know that the buttons are recessed into that big shroud for extra protection. But it really is annoying pressing the damn buttons. Oh. Not enjoyable. And finally, we come to the last award. My favourite all-time Casio. What a prestigious award this is. I want to say this was a hard decision. But honestly, it really wasn't. It's got everything I love about 80s Casio. Plus, I can type boobs on it. It really is my favourite Casio, even though it doesn't have a backlight on it. But there you go. In the coming months, I do plan on getting a couple more. Once you pop, for example, I want to get the AQ-230A. It's an Annie Digi Beauty straight out of the 80s. I also want to get my hands on the EVF-110D. Do it all, sports, daily, date complication, awesome handset, 100 meters of water resistance, looks like a solid bracelet. That will also be on my list. One other one, definitely, just out of curiosity, the Casio Fishing Timer. Got myself a marlin. Yes, the watch that tells you the best time to do some fishing. Yeah, really. I'll be getting one of them in too. If there are any other Casios under the £100 mark that you think I should add to my collection, stick it in the comments below. From me, the Mad Watch Collector, I'll see you in a tick, 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 a tick. Every hour, every minute